On my previous video, we had a commenter ask a question, basically asking the difference between a high pressure system and a cold front, and why are they not essentially the same thing? Well, great question, Alan, and uh, let's get into it. pressures on the surface. That tells us a lot about how air is moving within the atmosphere. As pilots, we're told how air moves around these pressure systems, but we don't necessarily go into what creates the pressure systems. And to do that, we have to take a step back and up and look at the jet streams. So here we've got the 500 millibar chart, which winds up being about flight level 180. We're going to compare a few things in the jet stream. One is ridges. So a ridge is essentially an area the wind's moving pretty straight. A trough is an area where the jet stream turns. Now, what happens when the jet stream turns is pretty similar to what happens in a creek or river in a turn. On the outside, at least, of that turn, the velocity of the fluid increases. And what happens when the velocity of a fluid increases is the pressure decreases, right? We see the same thing in a perfume bottle. We see the same thing in a venturi, in a carburetor, and we see the same thing over the top of the wings when we're flying. The air increases in velocity, which decreases in pressure. And that pressure differential can be manipulated to get desired results, whether it's produce lift or squirt the perfume out of the bottle. What happens practically in the jet stream is that increase in velocity around the trough creates low pressure. That low pressure is sucking the air up like a vacuum and creating that rising air that we see in low pressure. The opposite is true for the high pressure systems. So in the ridges, which is fairly straight, the velocity of the air is relatively lower. And when velocity decreases, pressure increases. That increase of pressure in the jet stream creates the increase of pressure on the surface. So that's what creates the low pressures and the high pressure systems on the surface. Let's talk a little bit about fronts. What is a front? A front is a line between two distinguishable air masses. Now, if that's the case, if there's inherently warmer air and inherently cooler air, where the front meets, how do we know if it's a warm front or a cold front? Well, a front is defined by which mass of air is advancing. Is it cold or is it warm? And what if there is no front advancing? It becomes a stationary front. Cold air inherently has higher pressure because the molecules are more densely packed. We also often see high pressure on the back end of a cold front. For example, up here in Canada, we see a cold front advancing and we see high pressure on the back side of it. Here it's also a stationary front. Now we could reasonably assume that there is cooler air north of the front, warm air south of the front and there's high pressure on the back. But again, what creates that high pressure are these ridges in the jet stream. That's slower moving air that has a higher pressure because of Bernoulli's principle. High pressure systems often follow a cold front. The two could be said to be linked because cold air typically has higher pressure, but they're caused by different things. Now, when we look at weather in the atmosphere, we have to remember that it is an energy system. No variables operate separately from each other. All variables come in together to play. And I'm not a meteorologist, but that's what makes forecasting so difficult is there are so many variables and it's not a closed energy system. There's constantly energy coming into and going out of the system through the atmosphere out into space or from space, right? We've got thermal energy from the sun, and then we also have energy that escapes through the atmosphere. 
So while a cold front and high pressure systems do seem to often go together, they're not inexplicably linked, though they do exist within the same system. 